So good morning and welcome to the webcast session. I wish that we'd introduce ourselves. I'm Maria Tassoni from the University of Toronto and the Canadian Collaborative here at the Institute of Medicine. My name is Olivia Runyon. I'm from the American Medical Student Association based in Sterling, Virginia. I'm Karen Wolf. I represent the National Academies of Practice and I'm a nurse practitioner at Samuel Merritt University in Oakland, California. I'm John Weeks. I'm with the Academic Consortium for Complementary and Alternative Health Care. Um, Karen beside me is with got 14 disciplines. I have five core disciplines, um, the naturopathic doctors, chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage therapists, and uh, direct entry midwives are the core disciplines that are involved in our consortium. So we thought we'd actually wrap both questions together. and. Um, talk a little bit about assessment of and assessment uh, for learning. I guess we did talk a bit about what makes a good assessment, but does anything else come to mind um, as you were listening to the conversation this morning? I mean, a, a, a beginning place for, for our disciplines is, was actually brought up by the, um, the social work student um, when she said, you know, are we actually going to be bringing into assessment our whether patients are getting healthier. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a real core element to be thinking of what, it, what is the outcome towards which we're assessing and to, to what extent can we actually um, bring this idea of, of actually creating health in the patients into what we're assessing so we're continuously driving the assessment process there. Can't give you the tools on it, but mm -hmm. I think the context was of this need, it was set beautifully by a, a fellow named Doug Wood with Mayo Clinic recently. It said that with the change in the healthcare system, we need to move towards health creation and away from just kind of doing procedures. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it, it puts a whole twist then on, then what are we assessing? What are the outcomes we're moving people forward if that's where we need to be moving healthcare? So. I, I was going to suggest that uh, thinking about assessment, I mean, one of the first questions then as you look at the question of how do we get to health is are we thinking about formative and summative and if it's formative um, how do we engage the learner in a way that we are really able to get at thinking deeply uh, and developing skills that get to health and, and that in my case could be human health it, in the case of uh, could be animal health we could be talking about dental health mental health physical health but as a team we share that responsibility and, uh, and I think one of the, we'll get to talking a little bit more about communication skills, is one central, one of the core competencies that we need to evaluate. Um, from the student perspective, actually what both of you said, um, I just realized that I read an article recently, I think it was on Kevin MD. it's a blog site um, for practitioners and also for our students. Um, something that was written recently is you can be a good medical student, but that doesn't necessarily make you a good doctor. And I think that says a lot about what our culture of medicine has kind of taught or um, kind of imprinted on students, which is you have to just get to the next step. Your grades are important. Your assessment is for your promotion. And I think a lot of students, obviously that's true, but a lot of students take that as kind of the end all be all and not necessarily what is the what is the end outcome for that? And what you were saying is actually, it's the health of our community and the health of our patients. And it should be ingrained in the culture of the learning culture, that it's not just, you know, you check a box and you move to the next step. It's how does this actually affect your care of patients? And I think that, like reading that article and then hearing this discussion, it's very, very clear connection. I was going to add to what all three of you said because there was a little bit of a theme around the context being important. And so that made me think this morning we were talking a fair bit about individual assessment and some aspects of it were about team assessment. But I was also thinking about the cultural piece and how do we begin to think about the organizations in which our students learn, the clinical organizations and where our practitioners work and how might we think about assessment as a way to actually drive cultural change or assess the current context of cultures of organizations. So for me, it was about thinking about assessment at an individual level, at a team level, but also at an organizational or system level. Um, and that would be really interesting to explore over the next day and a half. Yeah. 
I found myself um, reflecting on, you know, the beginning of the Global Forum was based on uh, one of the main documents was this Lancet study uh, for health professionals in the coming century. And, and uh, as you remember, the, 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 this setup was that we're moving toward, away from merely training experts to training people who are leaders and change, change agents. Mm -hmm. And I just want to get wanting to ask uh, Eric and John, so then, what the implications for testing if we're actually no longer doing that, what you're referring to is the, the sort of summative work of can you go to the next place and particularly around do you have the expertise, do you know your anatomy, your physiology, whatever, mm -hmm. to what, you know, what, are the, what are the charges to assessment? What, what comes to mind is, is the whole the catalytic mm -hmm. um, and clearly the formative are going to need to, to um, ascend in their value um, if we're going to actually be moving towards creating leaders who are comfortable in ambiguity, um, uh, which is, was part of that whole idea of what we need to be creating going forward. So part of the questions are about um, any good tools or tests that might help us get at communication skills. Do mm -hmm. any exemplars come to mind? Yeah, I, I would share one. Uh, something that we have been doing much more in a number of the health professions is the use of uh, simulation and standardized patients. And uh, recently I had an experience where um, we created a scenario where, in fact, the first patient the students saw in a scenario was a non-English speaking patient. They had to work with an interpreter and with family and uh, communicate uh, both uh, with the patient but also assess some of the basic safety elements in the situation. And I think having very clearly defined uh, criteria and outcomes and rubrics and then having an opportunity for the patient actors to respond to the students about how was that communication? How did you make me feel? Did, I, you know, did you make me feel safe? Did you make me feel cared for? Were you listening to me? Did you hear when I expressed distress? Um, I, it was a very rich learning opportunity from a formative standpoint. Um, and I can see how that that becomes very powerful because then you have a foundational learning that you then build on as you move throughout our programs. And that, that's rather core, whether you're talking about animals or humans, that communication is an essential component. When you talked about simulation, it reminds me of some work that um, a few colleagues are doing, um, Susan Wagner and Brian Simmons, on the use of interprofessional OSCEs, which on the one hand are quite exciting when I think about how we might approach team assessment, but they've also had an interesting, unanticipated um, impact on the faculty that have been part of building the cases and the scenarios for the OSCEs in terms of really getting them to engage even more deeply in interprofessional education. So it makes me think about assessment as not just being meaningful for our learners, but also in terms of how faculty might, how we might use it to drive faculty engagement in learning. I'm curious if any of that work is web available to, for other people to observe, look at, and use. Right now, it's a research project, uh -huh. so they, I think they're working on some uh, vignettes, video vignettes that will be available shortly, but uh, at this point, it's still within the context of a research project. So, so this was the, the dominant, uh, what I did uh, uh, is I sent a note out to some of our educators to, to feed me for this panel, and, and that was the dominant feedback that using, using the you know, live si simulations are definitely the direction to go. And increasingly, uh, David Wickey's uh, at the uh, University of Bridgeport sent me a whole structure that, that they're using. Um, actually, a, a, a naturopathic doctor who's the dean at um, uh, Ontario uh, Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine said that there's a, there's a specific OSCE-like test that's, that's called the, um, uh, uh, it's a physician um, primary intern clinical evaluation that is specifically focused on docs that um, anyway, that the, they found that they're, they're using also. Um, I'll just comment that in our environments that are often isolated, there is a, um, a uh, accessibility issue. I mean, our, 
excuse me, it's actually more of an accessibility and feasibility issue because often doing the interprofessional is challenging because we don't have the environments, right? Mm -hmm. so if you don't have the environments, you can't, can't test to it very well. So. so it's interesting. So it sounds like there are these pockets of experimentation and innovation or perhaps even tools out there that are not generally accessible or even known that we might be able to leverage in some way. Um, so it's interesting. Anything at the, from a student perspective to add around good assessment tools as we wrap up? Um, I think I was also going to provide the example of standardized patients, and I think that is a great way, especially in terms of um, students going from their non-clinical rotations to their clinical rotations and actually utilizing standardized patients more in the first two years because a lot of times we get um, more experiences in the third and fourth year.